Greetings and welcome to American Focus, powered by the Center Square. I am Dan McCaleb, executive editor of the Center Square Newswire service. Joining me again today, as he does every week, is the Center Square's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief, Casey Harper. We are recording this on Friday, July 7th. A week ago, Casey, you reported on a major U.S. Supreme Court decision striking down President Joe Biden's student loan relief program, saying it uh, uh, it, it was not within the president's authority to forgive up to ten thousand uh, dollars in in student loan debt of American borrowers. Tell us more about this. What what was the reasoning behind this ruling, and what does it mean? That's right. So um, this was a six three ruling against a Biden administration kind of fiat, and that and that was part of the problem. Biden announced, uh, as you said last year, that. Uh, student borrowers could have, have forgiven $10,000 of their um, federal debt for student loans and Pell Grant recipients could get up to 20000 forgiven. He also delayed repayment. You know, now Trump had also delayed repayment because of COVID. And so actually those with those student loans have not <laughs> begun repaying for um, several years now. Uh, so this court also, if you're listening and you haven't been paying your student loans for a few years, uh, you have to start repaying them here this later this year now. Um, the Department of Education will, will start rolling that out soon in, in a few months. But uh, the case in question is Biden v. Nebraska. Um, Justices Elena Kagan, Sonia Sotomayor, and Katanji Brown Jackson uh, dissented in the case. They backed up Biden's student loan forgiveness. They're the court's three liberal justices. That's right. The six who voted to strike it down are at least more conservative. Some are more conservative than others, but they're center to center right. Yeah, I mean, John Roberts is pretty moderate nowadays. He's, I mean, he he has not, quote unquote, come through for Republicans on some pretty big cases like, you know, like Obamacare and different things. So, or, um, you know, the, I guess, gay marriage ruling back, you know, a couple, a while back now. But so he's one of the more moderate justices. But you're right, this was definitely a more partisan split. And the question here was around the HEROES Act. So the HEROES Act was a, uh, a law passed by Congress that allowed the administration, the, the federal government to have a little bit of leeway in forgiving or delaying repayment uh, for service members so that, you know, who are having issues paying their loans. It was like, hey, let's help veterans out, you know, a little bit on the side with their loans. And so, you know, it sounds like a good enough idea. It was passed in 2003. But Biden took that bill or that law in question and expanded it and took the provision in it and said, actually, I'm going to use the authority of this act to forgive unilaterally um, all these Americans debt. Right. And so the, 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 there was really two questions in the case. One, did the, um, the state of Missouri have grounds to sue the Biden administration? Could they really prove that this policy was hurting them, causing injury? Because you do have to have injury to even file a lawsuit. And then second, did the Biden uh, administration, did President Biden uh, go beyond his authority, beyond his executive authority in doing this and manipulate the um, the HEROES Act? And the court ruled yes on, on both counts. It's pretty technical how Missouri proved that they had injury, they have a program that basically benefits from student loan repayment. And if these loans were forgiven, that they would cause them financial hardship. Uh, and so they use that as grounds to challenge the case. Now, the dissenters who we referenced earlier said that these were purely um, ideological and um, challenges, and they found a justification through this random government program to say, hey, we can challenge this. You know, there might be something to that. I'm sure there's some ideology motivating all this, but it seems that there always is on these big these big cases. And you could easily say that the defense is just as ideologically motivated. But uh, let's talk about the ideology here for a, for, mm -hmm. for a second. Um, we, we've, we've used student loan forgiveness. The, 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 the loans are forgiven, but it's not like the banks or the financial institutions who provided the loans were not going to get paid back. The debt was being transferred from the borrowers, the individual borrowers to American taxpayers, essentially American taxpayers um, we're going to pay, and I, I think it totals about $430 billion when you add up um, uh, all the Americans who had borrowed uh, uh, money uh, for schooling. Um, so American taxpayers were going to uh, uh, pick up that cost. And opponents of Biden's plan said, wait a second, you know, the vast majority of Americans didn't borrow this money. Why should they have to pay it back? It should be on the individuals who borrow the money. They knowingly borrowed the money. They knowingly uh, accrued this debt. They knew they were going to have to pay it back. So that's the uh, that was the ideolo ideological argument against it. That's right. Yeah. And, and the people who would be paying it back were often were some people who couldn't afford to go to college. Right? right. I mean, so you might have some guy who's, you know, working hard at his job, couldn't afford to go to school. But, um, you know, you could imagine a truck driver or something 
who, you know, works a lot of hours turning on the radio and hearing that a gender studies major out of Berkeley is going to get her loan partially forgiven right. with his tax dollars. It just seems kind of inequitable. Future doctors, future lawyers. Right. You, yes. Yeah, right. Right. And they would actually, uh, I wrote a story at the centersquare.com a while back that the lawyers and doctors were the ones who benefited most from this policy because uh, their loans being delayed actually was, you know, they had the most debt, right? And so therefore they benefit the most from having the loan repayment delayed these several years. And now that they're going to, you know, graduate and have have built up all these high incomes, they'll be able to pay it back faster. So it actually helped doctors and lawyers the most. Um, you know, there's also a question of, I, I've, no one's really talked about this, but I bring it up periodically of m- recruitment for the military. You know, we're going to, We've been writing a lot about that as well at the centersquare.com, how the military is struggling to recruit at the levels that it would like to. But you and I know, Dan, that one of the main ways they get people to join the military is paying for their college. Right. right? I mean, you you go to school. If you go join the military, you're going to get a good, you know, free education. You're going to graduate. Um, and often people who grow up in poor families take that route because they're like, hey, they're going to move up social ladder or the uh, economic ladder, hopefully by getting this education. But if it's just going to be handed out for free, I mean, doesn't that remove so much of the military's um, recruitment? Incentive. And then an incentive to join the military, right? right? right. Why join the uh, military um, if you have other uh, opportunities? Um, um, if, you know, the, the federal government's going to uh, forgive your student loan debt. That's right. And so what one on the other side of that, what Biden has repeatedly pointed out is that uh, those who owe the most debt, it's just a racial disparity, basically, in um, who holds this debt that um, black black Americans, and I believe black women in particular, hold a higher percentage um, of this debt. And so there, there's kind of like, there is um, a racial equity line of argument um, that the Biden administration has been using. And I'm, I mean, look, I know plenty of people uh, who would love to have their loans partially forgiven. Uh, I, I won't say whether or not I would benefit from that, but I know, you know, in here in DC and I, there's some good reporting on this, that this, uh, policy would be a windfall for DC staffers, because I tell you, this is a very popular, uh, policy here in the swamp, Dan, where you have all these young people who went to expensive schools and have tons of debt, but also, you know, maybe they do have a lot of debt, but they all have high earning potentials and great careers ahead of them making six figures in various, you know, federal right. agencies, contracting places, all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of young people who are probably going to be pretty wealthy one day who are going to benefit from this the most. So just to wrap up, the immediate ramifications are this Biden's student loan forgiveness plan is over. Um, uh, the pause that's been on repaying student loans pretty much since the beginning of COVID um, ends later this year. Um, if you do have a student loan, an outstanding student loan out, be aware of what's going on because you're going to have to start repaying that debt here pretty soon. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Casey Harper, I'm Dan McCaleb. Please subscribe. Thanks for listening.